Hey guys, it's Mike from Mike Jones Knife and Tool and I've got a little bit of an interesting project I'm working on right now so I thought I would try and document it and share it with you guys. I'm building a knife for a buddy of mine and um, the blade's already done. It's it's ready for, ready for a handle um, but that part, I mean, there's nothing new going on there. You guys have seen me do all that kind of stuff but the interesting part about it is I'm making the handle out of an old skateboard. Um, you guys have probably seen lots of people do this before already. Um, it's a popular idea. Usually people will use the skateboards that have the different colored plies. So it makes kind of an interesting um, design when you shape the handle and stuff. This, this board doesn't have that, but it does have some sentimental value. Um, it's an old skate from a buddy of mine, Paul Mack now. He is a professional ping pong athlete. He is a part-time trout slayer and a former wheelie board champion of the world. Um, this board of his is a Dark Star Impact Light, and that particular model of skateboard has something interesting going on with it. It's got this whole section in the middle that's milled out and replaced with strands of carbon fiber. The reason they would do that is carbon fiber doesn't like to flex. Neither does Canadian maple, but eventually after this thing getting worked and bent and jumped on all the time, the maple starts to get, it just gets soft and you can feel that when you're skateboarding. But that extra layer of strands of carbon fiber would just keep this thing poppy all the time, just snappy uh, without adding any extra weight. So that's a huge upgrade in a skateboard and it's going to be an interesting thing to work with for a knife handle. I think looking at it, I'm pretty sure that that those plies of carbon fiber are only that single top layer thick. Uh, so I'm going to try and preserve that on the outside of the handle of the knife. It's going to be tricky to, uh, to leave it just the right thickness so that I don't lose that trying to shape the, the handle into a handle. Um, so stick around and see how I'm going to try and do that with this, uh, this Dark Star skateboard for Paul Mack now. Okay, so there we have it cut out. Uh, because of the shape of a skateboard, there's a little bit of a, a rock in there, so I'm gonna have to flatten that off, which is fine because in order to, in order to maintain that, that carbon fiber on the outside, I'm actually gonna have to do most of my shaping on the inside. So I'm gonna slim this down. I'm gonna take a, a little more off the bottom, thin this bottom part out a little bit more, kind of a taper so that it's just basically kind of imitating the kind of the, the final shape of the handle that I'm going to be kind of going for um, on the inside so that I really minimize how much I'm going to, going to, <laughs> going to do on the outside. Um, also, it's kind of cool that a few of the layers of this are definitely a little bit discolored. So that'll be kind of cool. And the um, neat thing that happens when you cut through the side of a skateboard is you get to see the actual profile of this is a this is a pro deck so you'll see lots of concave here and it actually kind of flattens out on the the sides there which is different from you know a really cheap skateboard that you get so any any skaters out there are interested that's what the dark star guys are doing
Okay, so here's the result. Um, it's tapered kind of in like a like a triangle, a little bit that way, a little thicker at top, a little thinner on the bottom. That's just a little comfier to hold on to for the final shape. Um, I did have to keep in mind that the tang on this knife, the steel that runs through the handle is tapered. It's uh, fatter up near the blade and thins out at the back. I don't know if you guys can really, can really tell, but um, that's just something to bear in mind um, when I'm shaping this. The cool thing about these handles is all those plies and they're all a bunch of different colors, which is great, is it gives me a great indication of kind of exactly where I'm at with uh, keeping things really even shaping these things. So I went ahead and drilled out the holes. You didn't miss anything too exciting there. And then now I'm going to flush up the fronts. And the great way to keep these things in line is to use uh, the drill bits that you used to drill out the holes. Alrighty, just mixing up some uh, G-Flex epoxy here. Um, I've added a tiny bit of pigment. This is just regular paint pigment you get from the paint store, anywhere they mix paint, um, to make it black. And the reason for that is it just kind of gives you a little fail safe if there's any gap between your handle material and the steel, um, any gaps around your pins, anything like that. Um, it'll fill it in and it'll it'll make it black so it kind of just becomes a little shadow line disappears or if you've got like any file work on your spine anything like that uh, it'll fill it in black or you could use you know blue red whatever you wanted um, just use a very very little bit pigment is designed to never dry and it doesn't like in the container that I've got it in it's been there for a couple of years and it won't dry so um, use a very little bit otherwise your epoxy won't cure so I've got my pin stock cut when I originally was drilling out the holes in this blade um, you got to do it before heat treating so it's you got to really plan ahead and I didn't know if I was just going to use regular eighth inch pins like I normally do or if I wanted to put something fancy like a mosaic in there I ended up going for Paul a little fancy with the mosaic, so I'm using that hole. Having the extra holes in the tang is no big deal. Um, a lot of people like to drill out a bunch of holes for weight, which is fine. Um, you gotta be careful about your balance. Having the tang tapered takes a lot of weight out of the back end of the, um, of the handle, so you wanna make sure that you maintain your balance. Don't take out don't, don't be taking out too much material and making the handle too lightweight. Um, all those things kind of come into consideration when choosing handle materials and that kind of thing. You want your balance on a hunting knife, like a, an outdoor hand, hunting camping knife, you want your balance to be right in around the finger toil here. So right now this blade is obviously tip heavy, but once you get the, uh, the handle on there, it should balance out pretty nicely. That one just kind of comes with, I mean, you don't know until the final product because you don't know until the handle is shaped and everything so it just that one just comes with comes with experience a little trial and error and stuff and kind of getting a feel for it so drilling out a lot of holes for weight can be nice to take some weight out of the handle but don't ruin your your balance um, people also do it because they think that it's good to have uh, like a bit of a contact through the metal for the epoxy to reach the wood on both sides I don't know if I particularly agree with that. Um, having these little tiny cylinders of just epoxy, um, I don't think it's all that strong. Epoxy is strong when it's a really thin layer between two materials, but but if you just had those those little cylinders of epoxy, it'd be real easy to just shear those things. It's epoxy doesn't work that way, so I'm, I don't think having a whole bunch of holes drilled really 
helps your epoxy bond the handle material together on either side. That's my opinion. Do whatever you want. So we'll butter these guys up and get this thing clamped together. And then comes the waiting, which is to me one of the worst parts of making a knife. <laughs> I just want to get keep it moving, get on to shaping the handle and see the final product. Um, this one's got um, two larger holes and even in the smaller ones, you want to make sure you get some epoxy right inside of there so that it fills all the way around. All the way around your pin material, that, that larger hole at the back is actually a lanyard tube. I'm going to hammer this just out of the frame here on the jaws of my vise. Unless I just swing you up here. There you go. So I leave the jaws a little bit open just to give a little bit of room for that pin to pop through. Like that. And then it's got something for, for the other handle to kind of index on. So there you got a little bit of protrusion and that makes this guy line up nice and easy. No guessing. Okay, so I'll get this guy clamped up and then we'll shape it tomorrow. Good morning internet, it's the next day. I've had a shave and here's our knife. Our uh, G-Flex epoxy is all nice and cured up so we're ready to fire up the grinder and shape this thing and see if we can't preserve a lot of that carbon fiber texture on the outside of the handle. I'm really excited too to see how these different layers all kind of finish up. As I was cutting this thing up and finishing the fronts, um, the distinction between the different layers became a lot more apparent. So I'm hoping that's going to um, that's going to be kind of a neat little neat aspect to this handle. It's uh, going to be even more exciting than just the carbon on the outside. So let's get her going. Alrighty, so there you have the basically finished handle from a Dark Star skateboard with that uh, carbon fiber snappy insert for Paul Mac now. The little uh, mosaic pin turned out nice, the matching hardware at the back. 
might have taken a little more of this stuff off kind of than I was hoping to, but um, I didn't want to sacrifice the fit of the and the overall feel of the handle um, for a little bit of a little bit of aesthetic. So it's still it's kind of cool because this stuff on the original skateboard was just like that insert in the middle and it had the wood all the way around. So it's kind of the same idea, which is totally what I was going for. Anyways, those of you who watch me much on social medias will recognize the old wipey thingy. So I thought I would do one of this for you guys. This is some tongue oil. It's what I usually use to finish a lot of my handles. So there's the finished product. The inner uh, layers did end up popping out pretty nicely, especially the butt. You can see them great. All right, here it is. So there's our skateboard handle, mosaic pin, and it is a, a Damascus blade pattern weld that I get. Um, I get my buddy Joe from Halcyon Forge in Missouri. He forges up these billets for me. And he does a great job. His patterns are excellent. His welds are always flawless. And, uh, and that's what comes out of it. So there you go. Thanks for watching.